Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and check this out. Jeremy Allaire from Circle is thanking the NASDAQ. They're shouting and shouting him out in Times Square about Circle's new New York City headquarters. They say the future of finance has arrived. And so remember Circle, which my sponsor linked to Circle has been on their platform. I don't think it is now. It might be. But um and I think I own some Circle. I haven't checked lately. I think I do. Um, but anyway, Circle has, um, they've filed to go IPO. And they, so I'm not sure exactly when, but that'll get interesting. And also, I told you Cerebrus got added. Cerebrus, the AI, largest AI chip in the world, they got added back to the Link2 platform they today and they are um also have filed for ipo and they've got a their shares are are discount there's like special deal on the shares today so go check that out that's linqto.com or you can download the link to app now check this out turns out ripple whales bought over 380 million xrp in the past 10 days worth around $228 million. $228 million dollarinis. All right, folks, this is it. Altcoin Daily says 2025 was always the year. This is a look back at the uh, crypto bear and bull markets and the accumulation periods. <laughs> I've been here all the way back to 2013 been through almost all of it. It's been a long haul. But every time it's the same story. During the bear, I made I made my money and I look, I have as far as XRP, maids the wrong word because I never sold the the big bulk of my XRP. But the the accumulation that turned into high levels of um, money on paper, I'll put it that way. Um, always happened when I accumulated in the in the bear, and I always came out way ahead. Okay, so I'm excited about 2025, late 2024, 2025. Lark Davis has been there for a long time too. Says the next six to eight months is the time when generational wealth will be made. If you want to get rich, this is probably your best chance. Are you paying attention? I want to get rich. I'm not saying that he's right. I'm just saying. Interesting tweet. Elnor Terrett. The overwhelming message last night at the Stand with Crypto event was that reiterated uh, that was reiterated by Brian Armstrong, Wiley Nickel, who's a representative, was that crypto voter is real and they will have a voice in this election. Some interesting stats from my article. Stand with Crypto registered more than 100,000 pro-crypto voters during its tour of Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Across these four states, 4 million people own cryptocurrency, and 83% of them say they are almost certain to vote on November 5th. 67% of crypto owners in these swing states say they are excited to vote for candidates who support the cryptocurrency industry. There are eight times as many crypto owners enthusiastic to vote for crypto-positive candidates in these five states than the vote differential in the 2020 election. Interesting numbers, folks. Now, I've said it for a long time. This, this guy says, Pump looks like Secret Service. I've said it for a long time. Anthony Pompliano was supposedly ex-military intelligence. I don't think, I never have thought that he was ex-military intelligence. I think he was sent to be a social media guy to promote Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin is a government operation. If it wasn't, how come none of them, Anthony Pompliano, none of the major talking heads, not Peter Schiff, who 
pretends to, I think he pretends to be anti-Bitcoin. He really just wants to um, get the views that you get by talking about Bitcoin so that he can sell gold. Um, but because he won't ever give the kill shot to Bitcoin, is, which is that Homeland Security met with the four Satoshis and none of the Bitcoin pundits will even mention it. They don't even want to talk about it. They want to act like it doesn't exist, that video. Anthony Popliano also knows about XRP. If you think, this was his tweet from 2017, before all of the, the bad guys started trying to destroy Ripple and XRP. If you think Bitcoin went on a tear once at CNBC and institutional investors learned about it, just wait until they discover Ripple XRP. <coughs> This guy has always known, and I think he's, I think he was, he works for the government. I've always thought that. Now, this was, uh, this is Lynette Zhang. She was on Kitco. She's talking about gold, bricks, petrodollar. In terms of the currency, does this mean we go to a commodity backed currency? Does this mean we go to some kind of reintroduction? of the gold standard. I mean, you know, as we've discussed on this show before, there's some speculation that the BRICS are trying to come up with some common currency backed by commodities. Uh, mm -hmm. When we see this collapse, or, or does this then usher in some universal central bank digital currency? Like what happens when the faith is lost? Well, when the faith is lost, history shows us a hundred percent of the time, and I don't think this time will be different, that they will come in and they will bring gold as a backing of the currency. Not a hundred percent backed, but a percentage backed. It's why I'm watching Zimbabwe so closely with their Zig Zimbabwe gold that is presumably partially backed by gold and then, uh, and then foreign currencies, which I I think are the dollar, it's really hard to ferret out all that information because they're not really forthcoming with it. But they're having trouble adopting it because it's non-convertible. So they can say anything, but yes. Uh, and when you talk about a universal currency, the IMF and their currency, which is a basket of currencies, and there's no limitations, they can put every single currency in that basket. They've been working very, very diligently on creating that universal currency. And so I think, and even when you're talking about the BRICS, the BRICS countries are voraciously accumulating gold. The Western countries like the US and, and the other advanced economies, not accumulating so much, but those that are part of the BRICS nation, yes, they are. And there, and there are a number of countries that are repatriating their gold because if you don't hold it, you don't own it and they know it. So they're calling in their gold so that it's close to home and they have full access to it. And the one that probably makes me the most nervous is Saudi Arabia. And I say that because they're the ones that have supported a petrodollar, e even though that hasn't been kind of fully accurate, but they became a member of the BRICS. They are repatriating the, our, their gold. They are growing the gold that they have in deep storage, and they are distancing themselves to a degree from the U.S., I think that woman is very smart. In fact, I told, uh, her name's Lynette Zhang, I, I met her backstage at XRP Las Vegas, and the first thing I said to her, well, first I told her that I was one of the troublemakers, and she said, good, I like to take on troublemakers, <laughs> and then, she, then I was joking with her, but then I said, um, I told her that I thought she was right, I said, you probably wouldn't think you would hear this at a crypto conference. But I think you're right that Bitcoin is a Trojan horse. And she said, yep, I know I'm right. True story. Now, th this video, I almost played some of it in, in last the last video. But I do want to play some of it. This is Warren Davidson. And he's talking about the SEC under Gary Gensler. Mr. Reiners, I, I hope no one's listening to you about this market, especially as a student trying to understand the space. Uh, it's over a trillion dollars just for Bitcoin. The market's over $2 trillion. 
Uh, clearly, lots of consumers find value in this space. And frankly, the idea that you could point out that there's only one time that the SEC was even partially wrong has to be willful ignorance. I mean, I don't know how it could be anything other than deceit. I don't, it's hard for me to understand because on August 29th, 2023, the circuit court upheld the position that the SEC violated the Administrative Procedures Act when it denied Grayscale's application to convert Grayscale Bitcoin Trust into a Bitcoin ETP. Following that decision, the SEC waited until January of 2024 to actually approve the conversion. And it basically was a, was a pure rebuke of, of the actions. If you look at debt box, another pure rebuke. Lawyers would normally get disbarred for the conduct of SEC in the debt box case. So there are lots of cases where they've been caught and told that they were wrong by the courts. And the market continues to reinforce that there really is value, just looking at, uh, at Bitcoin alone. Um, people right now believe that it's a secure way to store value with a level of confidence of around $60,000. I mean, that's a, a new security product on the market that you could digitally secure a unit of value and people believe in it enough to put almost $60,000 into one unit of measure in a Bitcoin. And they don't just want to store it there, they want to be able to transfer it in a permissionless peer-to-peer -peer way. So if you read the Bitcoin white paper available at Bitcoin.org, you could see the concept, even if you just read the abstract. It's not just meant to be parked there or speculated on, it's meant to be able to move, be moved in a permissionless way. Now we don't know uh, how much uh, of that uh, trillion dollars of market cap in Bitcoin is self-custody versus uh, third-party custody. But the SEC, under Gary Gensler's leadership, has willfully undermined the ability for anyone to custody uh, digital assets, not just Bitcoin, but the rest of the space as well. So they've decided that if they can't completely end the entire space, they want to push custody of it to some third party that they can control or manipulate. They certainly don't want individual American citizens to custody their own wealth and be able to move it amongst others. That's Gary for you. He's got to go. Um, okay. <laughs> it's going to get interesting in DAIXRP.com in this one. Because I've noticed, and I saw it yesterday evening, I was sitting here watching TV, and I, and I was like, Trump just sent the, the bad guys a warning. These guys that have been trying to put him in jail, tap his phones, you name it, kill him. He sent them a message again last night, and I'm going to go over that. I'm going to show you what he did. But I've also seen him send several, he's been sending several messages, some subtle, some right out in the open. But he's, he's sending these, the bad guys warnings. This time's different. And I'm also going to show you something about some damage, damaging footage that supposedly could come out on, on someone, one of the most prominent people in the United States. And then I'm going to make a 2020 election prediction. And you didn't hear that wrong. Not 2024 election prediction, but a 2020 election prediction. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Away we go.